okay, let's talk about this cool patient who had an IUD malposition. So she's 24, she's had three children, and she came to the ED with a month of right lower quadrant abdominal pain. She also endorsed some hematuria, nausea, headaches, and lightheadedness. Her vital signs included a heart rate of 78, a blood pressure of 108 over 74, a normal respiratory rate, temperature, and pulse ox, and her BMI was 44. Her abdominal exam was notable for some right lower quadrant tenderness without rebound or guarding. And the pelvic uh, showed an IUD strain through the cervix without any swelling, erythema, lesions, or discharge. A transvaginal ultrasound was obtained, which showed a malpositioned IUD extending into the myometrial wall in a large left adnexal cyst. The OBGYN surface attempted to just remove the IUD in the ED, but they were unsuccessful. So the patient was admitted to the hospital for surgical removal the next day. This is an image, a still frame, of course, of the IUD transvaginal ultrasound. Here in the dark or hypoechoic area, we see the uterus and the uh, endometrium and the myometrium. The IUD is in the middle. It's a hypoechoic structure, and you can see that it's sort of embedded in the wall here in a couple places on both the left and right, where it doesn't look like it's sitting directly in the uh, uterine bulb. So let's talk about IUD complications. They're safe, effective, well-tolerated, and very popular. And just as an aside, this is not meant to diminish the meaningful uh, nature of IUDs, just to talk about complications. Spontaneous expulsion happens in about three to 6% of cases in the first year. PID is about 1% in the first month, and then that drops off afterwards. Failure of contraception, meaning they get pregnant, happens less than 1% of the time. Increased risk of ectopic pregnancy does occur. Perforation is very, very rare where it goes into the peritoneum. And malposition, which is typically not life-threatening and seen in our patient, happens about 10% of the time. The complications can be broken down based on how many days post-insertion. So the first week or so is the immediately post-insertion. Typically, bleeding and cramps, those are very common. PID rates are similar among patients whether or not an IUD is present. However, historically, IUD was thought to increase the risk of PID, but the literature doesn't really support that hypothesis. Patients diagnosed with PID should be treated, and the IUD doesn't typically need to be removed unless it's actinomycosis, uh, which is known to feed on the IUD. The next sort of category or bucket is the first three months or 90 days. Regular bleeding and cramping still persist, but they do tend to taper off. It depends on the type of IUD, and um, it is unusual to develop PID or endometritis later on. Other complications include non-palpable strings, non-visible strings, or sometimes the partner even feels the strings. Expulsion is more common during the first few months, and perforation is rare, and it's typically diagnosed when it occurs as the patient is, is sick. And then these are sort of the anytime complications that are not related to when it is inserted. So bleeding and cramping, again, typically taper off. You need to confirm IUD position and exclude other complications before you just call it typical bleeding and cramping. And I'll talk about malposition on the next slide. Expulsion includes cramping, dyspareunia, which is painful intercourse, vaginal discharge, bleeding, and pregnancy. Patient may see in their underwear or the toilet. Uh, otherwise, ultrasound will show an absent uh, uterus. Pregnancy does occur. Failure rate is less than 1%, which it makes it the best form of birth control. You should remove this whether uh, pregnancy will be continued or terminated. So let's talk about malposition, which is what our patient had. The IUD is displaced in some direction, either the lower uterus, partially expelled into the cervix, can be rotated so it's not sitting flatly, embedded in the myometrium, which is what our patient had, or partially protruding through the uterine serosa. About 10% of patients have this complication. They, develop, they can develop, but not always, pain and bleeding. This can be an incidental finding. Diagnosis is made with ultrasound. There is an increased risk of contraceptive failure, and removal depends on the location. Essentially, if it's symptomatic and protruding out of the uterus, it should be removed. If it's asymptomatic and still primarily sitting in the uterus, it can typically be left alone. So our patient was admitted. She had successful hysteroscopy with IUD removal in the OR. Uh, there were no complications. It had partially perforated her myometrium. And then she was lost to follow up. She did not follow up in the ob clinic. So three key points here. One is that IUDs are incredibly safe and effective and complications are rare. Malpositioning is seen in up to 10% of patients with an IUD and symptoms can be asymptomatic or abdominal pain and bleeding. And if symptomatic and depending on the location, the IUD should be removed by an OBGYN.